What's up, everybody? This is Zach B, and welcome back to another brand new tips episode here on Blowout Gaming. Today, I have a very special episode planned because we are back over here on Genesis with our Bloodstalkers, and we are going to be getting into some Bloodstalker breeding. Now, the Bloodstalker, guys, is easily one of my favorite creatures that was released with the Genesis DLC. And since I've been having so much fun doing these breeding videos with you guys, I figured why not go ahead and breed ourselves some big, giant, colorful spiders. Now, there are four main color regions here on the Bloodstalker, so it's going to take plenty of time, but I already have the breeding pen set up. So go ahead and smash that like button for me, and let's start hatching some eggs. All right, guys, so as you can see, we have one male set up here with four females. I figured we'd go with four because of space. Obviously, the eggs are going to drop where they drop, and they have to be close enough to the air conditioners to incubate. So I'm going to go ahead and start with four, and we'll see how lucky we get with our mutations. If it's taking too long, maybe we'll think about expanding from there. But like I said, we cannot move the eggs once they sit down on the ground, so we do have to be prepared with every egg that hatches. We are going to start by pulling out all mutations that we get and setting them aside. I will bring you guys back here when I have all of the different color regions mutated, and then we're going to go ahead and stack the mutations at the very end of the video so make sure to stay tuned for that definitely don't leave before you see the final colorful spider and definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button guys i don't want you to miss out on any of these great videos and i definitely don't want you to miss out on a single awesome color mutation stack i will bring you guys back here when we're ready to show some mutations <laughs> This is taking forever, guys. I think we're going to have to go to plan B. Four females was just not enough. So I ended up doubling the size of our breeding pad here, and I ended up doubling the number of females. So we have eight females with two males, and hopefully this speeds up our process. Let's get back to breeding. All right, guys. So I wanted to bring you back when we actually got a bunch of mutations. This process is absolutely taken forever. As I showed you guys, I ended up expanding from four females to eight females, and it did help things out a little bit, but it was still a very slow process. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the collection of what we got. Now, as you can see here, I have four rows of spiders. There are four color regions. So starting right up front here, we have our legs. So this one, as you can see, is a very vibrant, violet leg. I love this one. We're definitely going to be using this one today. This one here is a little bit more of a blue, green, dark teal. This one here is a nice, vibrant red, which I really like this one as well. And then this one is almost like a maroon, uh, kind of like a darker reddish purple. Now, the second row here is going to be our shell mutation. So you can see that the shell itself is actually changed. This one here is a light purple. Any changes on the shell are also going to be visible on the arms as well. And this one here was actually a double mutation. As you can see, we have the green legs, which in itself was its own mutation, but we also got the green shell as well. So I still have to figure out how I want to spread this one around, but I'm definitely going to be able to do some cool stuff with the green one. So I'm really excited about that. Now, this row here is going to be our webbing. As you can see, this is a nice bright blue. This one we just got recently was this nice bright yellow webbing, which I really, really like. I think I'm going to use this one as well today for sure. We have a lighter purple, and then this one here, of course, is the nice vibrant red webbing. So I definitely have to figure out which legs and which webbing I'm going to want to use with these bodies, but it's definitely going to turn out to be a really, really cool looking Bloodstalker. And then finally, we have the middle of the arm mutation. Now, this one was actually a lot more difficult for me to get. It took a whole lot longer, and I did only end up with two of this variation. But this one you can see is a light gray, almost a white variation. It's not super vibrant, but against that gray body type, you can see it right there in the center sections of the arm. 
This one over here, I liked a lot. As you can see, this is a teal blue center section of the arm as well. So I wanted to kind of get these spread out here for you guys to take a really good look at. And now my job is going to be to pair these different colors and start stacking some mutations. So I will bring you guys back here when I have some fully stacked, fully mutated Bloodstalkers. As promised, I am bringing you back with the fully, fully stacked Bloodstalkers. And I'm not going to lie, this has been like a four-day event trying to hatch up and stack these color mutations. It's literally two in the morning right now, and I'm trying to finish this video. But you know what, guys? It's totally worth it because let me show you what we got. I am absolutely thrilled. This first mutation stack here is going to be our light purple body with our blue arms. And then as you can see, I went ahead with the green legs and the red webbing. And it kind of has a Christmas vibe. And you know what? I'm feeling it. We're here in the Arctic. It's snowing and it's definitely giving me a holiday vibe. So that's going to be our first full stack color mutation for that Bloodstalker. Now the second one here, guys, is going to be our LA Lakers inspired Bloodstalker uh, with the violet legs and the bright yellow webbing and then we have the green body and the light gray arms on that green body and I think this one turned out really really special as soon as it popped out of the shell it was like holy smokes that violet and that yellow just looks incredible so that's going to be our fully stacked bloodstalker number two now number three took absolutely forever for me to actually stack um, and it was just getting that last arm mutation onto the body that was giving me so much trouble again i went with that bright yellow webbing but i went with the bright red legs and i was really really happy with this one how it turned out i think that red and yellow look really really cool together finally we had a little bit of a surprise and i say surprise because we are always bound to get a couple extra mutations while we are stacking on all of the rest of these and as you can see we got a nice bright teal leg that i went ahead and put on the purple body with the red webbing so again i wanted it to pop and these were the colors that were going to make it do so and this teal leg i was really really happy to get after all and then back here we did actually get another body mutation i didn't do anything crazy with it this one just popped out when i was trying to stack mutations but you can see on the arms here it does have that red on the shell and on the upper arm as well so i could potentially do something with that in the future if you guys want to see me stack this red shell let me know in the comments below but otherwise that's going to do it for today's episode guys so i really appreciate you hanging out with me make sure to hit that like button if you haven't already done so these blood stalkers turned out fantastic and they definitely deserve some likes so definitely smash that like button and then definitely hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so and i will definitely see you guys in the next episode